Here we go. Okay. Uh, all right. Okay, we are now live, which means that uh, people are starting to log in and they will be able to see us and hear us. Uh, okay. So we have to be careful about what we say. <laughs> uh, and now the next thing I do is um, the countdown clock. So you give me a minute here. Uh, okay, you should see, see it. I, I don't start the countdown for about another minute. Okay. I am, I'm pretty sure you can see the time. I got gotcha. you. And, and the uh, rainbow yin yang will start to rotate. Cool. Uh, but I'm going to wait until exactly 10 minutes before the hour. So everything is functioning normally. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. It's clear. I hadn't seen any jitters in the, the service. Sometimes it's lagging, but yeah. everything's perfect. I know the internet is always a little bit unpredictable. Yeah. But it's amazing what this technology can do. I know. Can you imagine when we were young? <laughs> I had no idea. I mean, they just invented the microwave when we were young, right now. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. The countdown clock is starting. So right on time. I have a friend that is in, uh, trying to catch up on my people requesting my attention. We, yeah, because a lot of people must be coming to you for healing. There are is never a shortage of people with sicknesses and it's uh, every day yeah. a, a lot of people. Uh, I, I, I know I hear from people too who are, some people are absolutely desperate. Yeah, you're right about that. And it, it makes it makes it hard for me to tell anybody, you know, no. So I try to help whoever I can. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, sometimes a little hope goes a long way for people's healing process. Yeah. Well, it's very interesting that uh, you're able to help other people and you're still, you know, working on helping yourself at the same time. I, I know, right? Uh, Diana Pasoka and uh, my NASA friend told me of a lady in, New Me in Mexico that uh, could help a lot of people, could never help herself. She mm -hmm. had RA just like I did. Mm. Yeah, weird. Very weird. Yeah. Well, I I know that there are these unusual situations. There was a very famous healer in England named Harry Edwards, for a long time was regarded as the the greatest healer in England. Uh, but he said he could never heal his own family members. Isn't that strange? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I guess so. You you do what you can. Yeah, I, I have no clue. Um, I don't think it's me doing anything at all. It's the phenomenon. Yeah. You know, I just ask these uh, these beings to to help, and sometimes they really do. Mm -hmm. Why some and why not others? I cannot tell you, but. It's definitely, uh, they hear us. I know that for sure. Uh, uh, they display that. A lot of times when I walk out and I just call on them and uh, ask for somebody's help to be helped 
uh, and I'll do it out loud to the sky. And then sometimes they'll start getting excited, like we heard you. And, and I've seen this over and over where just a simple prayer gets quite a, a response from them. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's when things start happening. And you were telling me earlier about the uh, flame, like, were they beings, beings of flame? Yes. Yes. Um, I really should send you a video of one uh, to where I have this tall, I, I don't know if I sent it to you or not. Yeah, I did. Where the being come out of the orb, right? Yes. You, you sent that to me and we included a still image of it. Right. In, right. in our previous video. That's how it happens. That's, mm -hmm. that's, that's the way um, it, it helped this lady for sure because she had stage four lung cancer and it removed it all. She's mm -hmm. cancer free to death. That's so wonderful. Yeah. And, and in the flame beings, did they come out of the orb the same way? Uh, but yeah, and pretty much you'd see the fire um, more than the entity itself. But I, I, I'm going to share this with you. I'm going to send you some videos I talked about earlier okay. to where I filmed the same being for nearly an hour. The same guy. I would film it in a exact spot. I knew where he was standing. And uh, every time I would point the camera for an hour, I would ask it, I would say, I have a friend standing right there. And as soon as I would say that, he would flash me in the same spot. I could end the video five minutes later, point it back to that same exact spot and say, my friend is still standing there. And boom, it'd start flashing. Mm -hmm. For a whole hour, almost, I did that. And it's really incredible interaction to see this. And uh, yeah, I don't know where it's going, but it's really ramping up mm -hmm. in a huge way. Well, it sounds like uh, whoever these beings are, they wish to make themselves known. Yes, I will agree with that. I think that that's... Uh, uh, if I had to say anything, what it is I'm doing, I just feel like I have to, uh, I have to introduce them because they want to be. As far as uh, what we glean from that, I think everybody will glean something individually. Uh, I don't have answers, but I have a, a, a way of introducing it to people. And that's kind of what I feel like I have to do. Mm -hmm. Well, you certainly managed to uh, attract uh, a lot of uh, scientists and government people. And now yeah. I think members of the public at large are becoming more and more aware of, of yeah. what you're doing. So some, it's building like in a very slow, steady and responsible way is how it appears to me. Yeah exactly perfect way to say it it's happening slow and steady and um the amazing thing jeff is i was able to to predict it i didn't predict it i just repeated what i was told in 2019 i had a visitation that i filmed this or for 18 minutes hovering over my pond mm -hmm. at that point it said we're going into a new phase we're going to start ramping up uh, our presence around the world. We're going to let you help us, uh, help introduce us. And um, from that point to today, I have uh, over 25, close to 2,500 videos on my phone taken since that time, actually in the last two years. And it's just every night I walk out, and I'll get 10, 15, 20, 25 videos every night of the phenomenon. Just about it. Mm -hmm. A slow night would be a half a dozen. Five years ago, it'd be one every week if I was lucky. So it's definitely picked up in terms of intensity. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
And why? The weird thing is, they told me that in advance it was going to happen, and it's definitely happening. Yeah. Well, we're at a point where uh, we could use a lot of help on this planet. Yeah, you're right. You know, thinking about it, remember in World War II, the Foo Fighters? Mm -hmm. This is orbs, same thing. Uh -huh. I think they were. Uh, were very much involved in uh, showing themselves for a reason. What reason, I'm not sure. But I, I think they were protesting all the, the, the suffering going on and people dying. And, you know, it was a horrible situation. So they were, they were very aware of it. And uh, it's happening now. Pretty much like it did then, but I think there's going to be. I really believe there's going to be a meet and greet before it's over with. Well, and do you have names for any of these beings? Do, do they... I have no names. Uh -huh. It's just it's a big mystery to me. This, like the you know, I just think that we need the scientists there more more brains involved to figure out what it is we're dealing with you know i have my ideas but still i can't i can't put uh okay. well, certainty we're gonna, on we're going to start the live stream in just a few seconds officially start okay. although people uh, who have been logging in early will have heard everything we've said oh yeah well here we go i'm gonna Stop the sharing. Welcome, everybody. I'm Jeffrey Meshlove, and I'm here with Chris Bledsoe. Chris has been uh, on New Thinking Aloud previously. I'm sure many of you have watched our uh, interview about UFOs and miracles. Uh, and in many ways, Chris, I think it's fair to say your life has been touched by something that appears miraculous. Uh, a little earlier, you were telling me that it's taken on a, a new phase as of Easter. Maybe you know, we could repeat that for the benefit of people who weren't uh, online earlier. Uh, yes. Um, well, you know, every year Easter has been a, a, a really big thing uh, since 2012. When, when I had this experience with a lady, she came at Easter where, the following Easter, she came again. And uh, this past Easter was no different. Um, it, it took on a new, a new form of this fire, like uh, a flame. Sometimes it would be red or white or orange, a lot of times yellow. And it started in the last week of February. Um, uh, I had the first sign of it in the forest. It's, and then all of March and right up to Easter, it kept growing in intensity to where uh, I have pretty close to 100 videos taken in four weeks uh, leading up to Easter of this, this phenomenon appearing like fire, like a yellow flame. And uh, you, now you mentioned to me that it seemed to go away just about as quickly as it started, but has it recurred at all? Haven't seen it since. Only once, Emily and I were out one night this week and we had uh, two, two times it appeared, uh, but that was it. It, it. You know, it's like this flash in the forest, just saying, hey, we're here, but it didn't come on up out of the forest right on up to us within feet like it was doing around Easter time. It was crazy. I had I had a, a, a friend of mine from Charlotte, a professor here, and um, he he was uh, had he was rocked about this, how it, it came within just a few feet of he and I both. And, uh, so there's a lot of witnesses to it. Yeah. So it would appear, as we said uh, earlier, the phenomenon is increasing in intensity and seems to be uh, deliberately making an effort to become known, to become 
even regular and observable and, and something uh, far less elusive than in, uh, had been previously. Yeah, I noticed this in 2019. I mentioned earlier about having an experience over, over my pond, 25 feet away. I filmed something uh, for 17 and a half minutes. And at that point, it, it put it in my head that we're going to reveal ourselves in a much larger way around the world. And we're going to let you help us. Uh, with film and witness and camera. And from that point to today, it, 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 there is no doubt in it. You can go back to 2019 and witness 10 interviews I did talking about this very same thing, witness and camera. And then look at the amount of videos uh, uh, I took from, from 2007 to 2019 was... Uh, to nowhere close to the activity that we've taken from 2019 to today, mm -hmm. uh, well over 2,500 videos. This is crazy. So oh. You've got a lot of uh, history now going all the way back to 2007, 16 years ago. Right. And right. so you, you can see that over that time frame, there's, there's been a, uh, an arc, a progression of intensity. Yeah, when COVID came, uh, and, and uh, this was something I, I was told to warn about in 2019, that there was trouble coming and that to, to store up and lock your doors. And I had no idea what they were talking about. I just repeated that. There's trouble on the way and we need to, to uh, store up and close your doors. And, that was in Easter of 2019. And I warned that all of Easter. And the last time was in February of 2020. I was in San Francisco talking about this. And COVID came. Um, and, and I think that event rocked the, the spiritual world. Whatever happened there got their attention. From that point forward, they have been uh, an exponential increase in the activity in a huge way. Mm -hmm. uh, well, we've got questions coming in from viewers. Here's one from a viewer, <coughs> David, who asks, as an experiencer, how do you integrate your faith into your experiences? Well, that's a great big question. Uh, you know, I was born and raised a Baptist and married a Pentecostal girl and, and, um, when it happened, I was crying out. I had lost all hope of living. Uh, I, I actually, at that time, I just wanted the pain to go away. I wanted to, to leave this world, even though I did. But I was at that point. And um, so I was praying that night. And these UFOs came and changed everything. And so I continued to pray when I go out. And um, they respond to me in that manner. So it's not like I go out and, and I go through any um, mantra or any organized thing to ask them to come. I just, I just pray. And that's how they come. So my faith has uh, come full circle. I couldn't understand it to begin with. I thought, how is this connected? Uh, but 16 years of it, I can tell you, it's a spiritual thing that these these orbs are uh, are. Uh, it's not like a physical thing, even though they can be. It's a spiritual thing, and I think my faith is stronger today than it ever has been. Even though I'm not a full time, I don't go to church like I used to at all. Because they don't want me. As long as I talk about this, I'm not allowed to come. And so I have my own connection to something that uh, is so satisfying and uh, it's exciting. And I know it's of God. At least I feel it is. But it sounds like the, the people in your church where you're no longer welcome 
don't think that it is of God. Right. And that's typical of the Christian faith. Um, they've been told from the beginning of time or, or uh, the, the, the faith, I guess, that it's demonic. Well, how do they know that? They don't. They have no clue what it is we're dealing with. And I think this is the awakening that's going to happen in this world. We're going to have to reconcile uh, what we have believed in and what is really there, I, I think, is going to be the next thing we have to understand as a as, it's, it's time to to realize we only know a little bit we don't know a, a very much about any of this and it's a new horizon now okay here's a question from someone whose internet name is the apollo dionysus dichotomy uh -huh. who says I heard Chris's son, Ryan, talk about a past life that he had discovered through regression therapy, where he and his dad were family in previous lives together. Uh, and the question is, do you believe in soul groups? Yeah, uh, you know, I'm open to, to a lot of things. I, I really believe that we're always connected in this world and in the next. I fully believe there's another place we go when we leave here. Um, what and how, I don't know, but I really believe we're all, we'll be back with our family. And, and I say that because I had someone that his father died, a friend of mine from Charlotte. He was a news uh, radio, FM radio broadcaster, and his dad died, and it nearly destroyed him. And he came home about a month after his father passed away and had a message on his answering machine. Oh, kind, you know, the old timey stuff. And it was his father. And he said, Art. And it was real scratchy, but you could hear him perfectly. And he said, Art, you need to quit suffering, son. You have no clue, but we'll be together again. And uh, we're always together. And that was the message. So from that really made a big effect on me hearing this and um, strengthening that uh, belief in that maybe we reincarnate um, back. You know, I don't know. I'm open to a lot of things nowadays, but babbling, I guess. I need to quit babbling. Mm -hmm. We've got a... Uh... Sorry about that phone uh, in the background. Uh, oh, okay. I should have disconnected it. Okay, uh, I think it'll stop. Um, and a couple of people who know you are online uh, with us. They both have had uh, experiences when they were with you, and they're wondering if you want to talk about them. One of them is John Alexander, who's been a guest on New Thinking Aloud. Uh, also, Marla Fries, who has been a guest on New Thinking Aloud, and they both say they were with you in different circumstances, one at the Monroe Institute last year, and another one, uh, John Alexander says you recorded orbs while you were talking with him, uh, yeah. and they both wonder if you'd like to tell those stories. Well, absolutely. Uh, we can start with either one. You, you... Well, let's start with John Alexander. Okay, um, John, my dear friend, John, um, you know, he wrote about this in his book, I have an experience with me. In fact, he's been on your show talking about the Cape Fear River uh, experience he and I had. Uh, and ever since then, I don't know what it is about my friend, John, but when he calls me, which he does quite often, and when he calls me, I immediately feel their presence and I've demonstrated it to him over and over. I go outside, I take my camera and I'm on the phone talking to John, filming it in real time. They just tend to come. I, I don't know why, but I know there's a connection he and I have uh, that's with them and they intend for us to see it. And I have so many videos of John and I talking 
uh, over the last uh, couple of years and uh, these orbs are just appearing and it gets funny I, i'm i'm telling john you won't believe what's happening right now while we're talking these orbs just appear four and five in, in rows and stuff and so yeah it's, it's just that john and i have a connection in, in in the heavens i guess that it's very strong and uh, it's interesting because john is also my good friend yeah, I lived in Las Vegas for 17 years uh, and got to know John quite well during that period. Yeah, I have a video that is mind boggling. Uh, it's like John says, you can you can you can tell that it's not fake, that it's in real time and it's during our conversation. Uh, it, it's really credible. You can see how low it is. Uh, and how it's reacting is, is, is you can't unsee it. I mean, it's not like something that you're struggling with it. Was it this or was it that? No, it's right in our face and interacting with John. So. And Marla Freeze points out that the phenomena that are associated with you are not just relegated to North Carolina where you live, and she would like you to share what happened when you were together with her and other people at the Monroe Institute in Virginia last year. Okay. <clears throat> well, uh, we were there for four nights and the intention was to, to have it appear. And from the very beginning, I thought my manager, David Broadwell, David put the event together and invited everyone and, I told David in advance, I said, David, be sure you tell everyone that comes to, to leave their skepticism at home. If they want to experience this, they have to leave that at home. Can't be skeptical. If you are, you'll be lucky to ever experience this. It just does not want to go against your skepticism. And so the very first night we were there, I was under severe pressure to have it appear and I probably shouldn't have been, but I was. And Emily and I walked down the hill to this giant crystal, put my back against it. And, and I just threw my hands up and I said, now's the time. If you're going to appear tonight would be perfect. And suddenly, as soon as I said that right over the mountain flash, flash, and it started flashing coming right over our head. And all I was so happy saying, thank you for that. And I hear this guy in the group counting, one, two, three. So I knew right away he was trying to debunk it. So it got under my skin a bit. And I said, Emily, we're in for a hard week. If they keep that up, we, they just won't come. They won't cooperate. And so I, I kept my, my uh, thoughts to myself. First night, second night, the orbs were appearing. There were a lot of orbs uh, that were up high and flashes and whatever. But nobody, these guys were throwing water on the fire by trying to explain it away. And I was getting more frustrated. So about the third night we were there, uh, I had finally had come to... Uh, to the conclusion that, that, uh, that I had to say something. So my friend Rob there, he had his camera. And Rob is a, an explorer. He explores around the world filming this phenomenon. He's a really great guy. And um, I, I started the conversation that night in front of the whole group. We actually started bickering. I said, look, you've got to let it manifest. You can't try to debunk everything that comes over our head. Even this flashing orb, uh, they were trying to debunk it. And so after, um, I think the crowd even got uh, a little, uh, they all went in that it, it just got into just my frustration with these folks. Well, Rob comes over and he has his $250,000 camera array sitting right next to us up on the hill. And he walks up to me 
And uh, he said, Chris, I just got to tell you, uh, he said, I want to uh, apologize. Um, he, he said, and, and I, I see a new light on how to interact with this phenomenon. You've opened my eyes. And when he said that, I stood up and I hugged him. I said, Rob, I appreciate that. Um, and it, it was a heartwarming thing, the way it happened. But immediately, when I stood up and 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 basically said, you don't have to apologize. Uh, you know, I'm sorry for getting out of the way. Immediately when I did that, I hear uh, Charlie and Rodriguez standing down the hill. And they're like, oh, my Lord, flash. And so everybody looks and this orb starts flashing at us right at the very time Rob and I hug and make up, basically. And for the next uh, 45 minutes, nearly uh, that or more, the, he filmed that orb and it appeared, I think, uh, Marla said in the Vega constellation. But here's the cool thing. The orb never moved at all. The whole star field moved. The planets and the stars moved in that time, but that orb never left its position. It's a true MUFON case now. Rob had it analyzed by MUFON of Canada. And um, so that was the first time really in history that the phenomenon was filmed there. And um, we have a true unknown. And it was for a whole hour. There's no debunking it. I mean, it is what it is. And um, but the whole thing was it, it knew our thoughts, Jeff. It knew what Rob and I were saying. It knew what we were thinking. And it knew that when we embraced one another at that very second, it, it, it appeared happy and started getting excited. And how does that happen? How do they know our emotions? How do they know our thoughts? And, you know, it, just, it was an amazing thing that happened there. It opened to all of us. It helped me. It taught me a big lesson about this. And, um, so we all left there a different person. And, I'm under uh, the impression when you're describing how it knows your thoughts that you also know its thoughts. Yeah, at times, I guess you could say. Um, it, it, it's... it's it's not that I know it's thoughts, it's that it projects things um, in a telepathic way, I guess you might say. It, you see these visions and, um, yeah, but I don't really know it's thoughts, but it definitely knows ours and it knows the direction you're going to look before you look. It can take a whole group of 50 people and appear to one out of the group in front of everybody. And it'll be right when that person looks a certain way, it'll say hello and nobody else will see it. It's that complex beyond our thinking. Here's a question from a viewer named Pauline Zender Swatter or Swader. Uh, and she says, I have heard that ascension is going to be within, that some will opt to not ascend, but remain as leaders for building a new earth. Has the lady spoken of this? Well, she, she did tell me that uh, there will be a new knowledge um, to come in our future. And what that means, um, I don't, I'm not sure. I took it as a, an awakening of sorts. Could it be awakening to something terrible? I guess it could be. Um, could it be to uh, a, a whole new uh, awakening of, uh, of our relationship to them, I think is more likely. And I believe it's going to shift everything we know um, and how we study, and how we look at evolution and how we look at all this stuff. It's all got to be addressed and and change this exciting what's coming um, where it'll go i don't know but um, i feel my job is just to introduce the phenomenon to the people and that's what i'm trying to do 
Okay, we've got a, a question here from a viewer named Christopher, who asks, when these beings respond, is it in a way that gives you a sense of validation to say a confirmation of some kind is specifically communicated? And is it in the same way each time? Uh, it's not in the same way each time, but it's pretty, um, I, yes, they do answer. Um, and it's how I present the question to them. Uh, example, my daughter this week is uh, on the way home from Florida now. She's moving to Tampa. And she was agonizing with the thought of moving. It's just the right thing to do, Dad. Should I do this? I said, well, let's go ask the phenomenon. So she and I walk out. Um, she's down there looking at apartments, right? She and I walk out and we sat down and under the stars. And, and I, we talked about what it is she's doing and her um, making this decision. I said, well, just ask. Ask the heavens if, if you're doing the right thing by you and your husband moving to Tampa and he taking this new job he was offered. And immediately she just, talking to this guy and said is this the right thing to do and immediately this giant flash he said for the next two minutes i filmed this orb flashing so it, it definitely answered her and she took that as yes that's what i'm supposed to do and of course she's on the way back from tampa today because she decided to make that move but they, they do that. It's pretty personal to the way they'll answer you. Sometimes it's with visions, with uh, this telepathic thing to where you see images of uh, whatever it is they're trying to show you. There's a viewer whose internet name is ABC who is wondering if you've posted these videos online somewhere. Is there a place where people can go to see them? Yeah, uh, on my website, ufoofgod.com, there are uh, links to my social media. Uh, Instagram is where I post uh, some of these videos. There's about 50 out of 3,000 on there, 2,500 um, is all. I don't put that many out there, but uh, there are some there you can see for sure. And here is a question from a viewer named Courtney Salomon who asks, how should we prepare for what is to come? Well, I, I don't think we've got to do anything special other than open your heart and uh, realize that we're not alone and that there's a greater power that knows your thoughts. Um, and, and they know everyone's thoughts. Uh, just embrace it. Um, and sit back and watch it manifest. It's coming. And I don't know that there's anything special we have to do other than open our, our hearts to it being real that, uh, from that point. I've got another question from a viewer named Brian Banford, who asks um, about your son, Chris Jr. He says he saw an emotional interview between Ryan, your son Ryan, and Chris Jr. And uh, he hopes that Chris Jr. is, is well. And uh, uh, he, so he's asking, how has he uh, been doing integrating this experience into his life? Well, thank you for asking that, Brian. Um, Christopher, as a new father now, he's got a three-year-old son, and um, he quit running, right? He, he was afraid of it. It scared him to death when he first experienced it in 2017, and it messed him up so bad that um, he ran from it. He moved away from home two or three times. He came back, and he never would talk about it. If I brought it up, he would walk out of the room. If anybody brought up the subject, he tried to run from it. And um, when Teddy was born, he was forced to settle down. So he bought a house a couple of miles from my mom and I. And, um, and, and 
magic started happening. He began to, uh, people began to share with him. They, he, and, and talk to him and tell him how they, they boosted his, his confidence. These so many people nice, like Brian calling in and concerned began to share their, uh, their, uh, building his, his his spirits back up and he started talking about it at that point and now today he uh, he did his first interview after 12 or 15 years with his brother first time he ever talked about it and this is what they're referring to but today he's a different person he loves to come and and, and uh, in fact he'll be on the history channel this summer there's a new series coming out uh, that uh, was announced this week and he'll be featured in an episode there. So that's a milestone for him. Huge. And I've got a question here from Andre Slavash Krasowski, who is asking about some of the malevolent things that are sometimes associated with UFOs there are people who get injured and who are abducted and, and sometimes uh, have surgeries performed on them, invasive procedures. Uh, do you have any thoughts about that? Well, you know, I can only feel sorry for those that's had that experience. Um, in, in the 16 years of my uh, ongoing experience and study uh, documenting this, I've never had that problem, but I have heard of others that have. And, uh, you know, it's a big universe and there's a lot out there. And I, I think that there's a great possibility. Uh, it, there could be multiple dimensions with beings coming from other places. Uh, other worlds, but my experience has been with these balls of light, with with uh, orbs, and with these beings that appear to be glowing. Never any negative stuff have I experienced, but you know, there's good and bad and everything. There's yin and yang. I love your symbol, the rainbow, yin and yang, because that's pretty much the way I see it. It was a NASA scientist that that told me, Chris, it's just like a battery. There's a positive and a negative. That's how it all works on Earth. The Earth is a diode creating energy. and We're all swimming in electricity, and there are positive energies and negative energies all around us. So, you know, just, just stay in the light. Stay positive. Well, speaking of positive energies, Steve Hassler says, Hello, Chris. I feel the collective needs to be made aware of unity consciousness and then unconditional peace lo and love and, in and joy will follow. Do you have any thoughts on this? Well, I, I agree with them. Uh, I'm all about being positive. Uh, I know this, if I woke up in the morning and I turned on the news and they were showing a clip of the Ukrainian war, it would stay in my head all day. It would probably make my day uh, negative in some way so i try to not look at it or hear it at all I, I don't even subscribe to television because for 10 years i haven't had television because i don't uh i don't let that negative into my eyes or ears politics i don't get into at all i have uh, I, I stay away from it because it, it there's a negative thing always happening. There's a controversy always going. And I don't want myself to, to experience that. So I try to stay in the love and the light and just be happy, you know, and share the good stuff. That's... Yeah, politics seems to be a, a, a game in which it's sort of a, uh, we're the good guys and the other side are the bad guys, often right. evil. And so it's it's about good and evil, no matter which side you're on. It seems these days, the other side is doing terrible, terrible things. Yeah. And, and we've got to do everything we can to stop them from doing those terrible things. Yeah, right. And I guess your philosophy is more like embrace everybody. Yeah, I love them all. Uh, who, no, no matter 
and I have friends that are on both sides of that coin and I just I just love them all. I don't I don't want to be in that argument. I can't do anything about whoever's president. Uh, I respect whoever. I went to civics. You know, I had civics in high school. What happened to that? Where people learn to be good to one another and accept this one's position for a certain number of time. We just got to win it next time. But um, I try to stay out of that and be friends with everyone. And that's just the way I live my life. It's, it's in the positive with all possible. Here's a question from a viewer named Andy Oxide. He asks, does it seem to you that the reason these beings present themselves to us in this way is to change our perceptions and beliefs like a guided evolution of faith and physics? I wish I knew those answers. Uh... I think they're here to help us uh, evolve. I think they want us to evolve into, uh, uh, you know, a positive light. I don't, um, I really can't answer that other than I think they're trying to help us evolve. I really do. I think they can do it wirelessly. I think they can affect our physical DNA. And I see this through healings people that are in need and, and just wirelessly they can do it. Uh, I think we're all connected to something wirelessly. It's a wireless world. Susan McDonald has a question. She's asking, are the colors significant? Do they vary with the date or with your mood or with any correlations that you've noticed? You know, uh, if we look at everything over the years, uh, the difference I see is around Easter. There's a marked difference in what appears, the colors and so on. Uh, but on a whole, you know, they're all this pretty much random. It can be a green ball of light in my house to a, a red one, to an orange one, to a yellow or a white. I watch the same orb shift colors from every color under the spectrum. They just go through this revolving colors of red and blue and everything in between those colors. I don't know if that really matters or not. Okay. And here is a question from a viewer whose internet name is Bristol Crystal Reiki, and who asks in Chris's book, he mentioned something to happen in the year 2026. Can you elaborate? Yeah, um, where that date come from is through uh, an astrology uh, chart. Um, but the lady I met in 2012, she told me, she said, there, uh, there's going to be an alignment. Uh, and she said, there'll be a new knowledge to come to the human race. And that new knowledge will happen when the red star of Regulus appears on the horizon in front of the Sphinx in the gaze just before dawn. I had no clue what that meant at all. I called a friend of mine who is a, a literary agent, Lisa Hagen, and Lisa has a whole group of uh, astrologers that she works with different folks and they ran a star chart and she called me up wow you're not going to believe this that does happen in 2026 and so um what that new knowledge is going to be i don't know but i tend to believe it's going to be disclosure that it's going to be an awakening into the, and, and I don't think everybody understands how big a shift this will be once we all learn that we're not alone. That rewrites a lot of the history books that our children are being taught. So there's going to be a, a big switch for us all. We're going to awaken to something um, that we have always wondered, are we alone? We're not. Definitely something there that wants us to know it's real. 
I just want to let our viewers know it's now 38 minutes after the hour, and we're going to continue for another 52 minutes until uh, the bottom of the next hour. So uh, just so people know, um, we've got a question here from a viewer whose internet name or YouTube name to be precise is CC Writer, who says that there's a report out there that you, Chris, have information on an alien attack resulting in great death and a certain number of people being taken away in a spaceship. Can you comment on that? I have no idea where that comes from. Uh, maybe somebody else put that out there with my name on it, but no, I have no idea about an alien attack. Ever. Okay, good. Well, then let's clear that up. All right. And then here's a question from Harry Wardley, who is talking about what about the video of the orb that grew wings and was the size of a 747? I have that video and I haven't released it. And uh, it, it's not that it grew wings. It, it when it appeared, uh, I was it was on Easter of 2022, uh, not this past Easter, but the one before. And it was right when I was making the decision to write this book: should I do it or should I not do it? And I had a piece of paper in my hand um, that. Uh, my friend David, he, he was the one saying, you've got to write this book, Chris. You've got to leave this. It's very important that you do this. And he'd seen and experienced the phenomenon with me. And he was uh, really, uh, he was the one that made it all happen. And I went out and I asked, I asked visually to the sky. And, I mean, I spoke audibly out, should I do this? And the minute I did, this orb appears over the pond and uh, not very far away. And it, it wasn't very big, about like a bowling ball. And it, uh, the camera I use is a monocular. So you look through it with one eye. And as I'm looking at this orb, I started filming it immediately. And I thought, how great, you know, I got this visual answer to what I was asking. But while I'm looking at this orb, I look, something catches my eye up real high. And this orange, um, it wasn't an orb. It, it, it was, it was, it was, it looked flat when it started coming down. So it was way up there, way above the orb I'm looking at. It looked flat, sort of, but it was shifting in colors from red to orange and this most uh, amazing display. And as it got closer and it's descending down further and further, I noticed these wings just started raising and lowering. And it was huge. It was big, big as a, an airplane. Um, and and it, it came right on down. And as it's descending, it turns to white. And it comes right just south of me, but pretty much over me. And it turned to the south. And flapping these huge wings flew out of sight and um, I have not released it yet at all and I may in time but there are reasons I have and I can't say it now, now but uh, in time I will. In, in other words there are things that you know that uh, you're withholding because the timing isn't right yet. Right timing's wrong um, there are other things, too. I have a video of a little being walking. He's about two and a half feet tall, walking across the lawn and walks up to where I'm standing. And uh, this flash happens. And next to me, standing this big, tall, eight-foot being. And the little white glowing being turns and walks back to the camera. And this time, it's holding something in its hand that looks like a Star Wars lightsaber, in a way. We took that video in 2015, I think, 2016. Very interesting. 
There was a uh, an interesting question that came up earlier, and I I'm looking for it because I think it's relevant now. But uh, since I can't find it, I'm going to paraphrase. Okay. And the question was that there was there a point in time. Wait, here it is. And it's from a viewer named Christopher. I'll come back to that because it's the same name as, yeah. as your own, who says, what year or specific event during the 16 year period that these phenomena have been happening, did you finally feel recognized or that you weren't, sorry to say, going mad? Um, for the first five years, it definitely wasn't in the first five. That was, uh... I refer to that as five years of darkness because we were ostracized from the community and family and church. And um, it was a it was a terrible thing to see my children coming home crying. And I began to feel responsible for it. And so in 2012, I decided to quit. And um, I walked outside the night before Easter, and I shouted to the heavens, I'm tired of this. You've ruined my life. You, you healed me, which I'm thankful for. Um, I'm very thankful for the whole experience, but I'm very upset that it has had a negative impact on my children. So I'm not ever going to talk about this again. And that night, I uh, had an interaction with the lady, and that's when everything changed from dark to light. And, uh, you know, it's really absolutely shifted everything. If you read the book, you can see how the first five years was going. And then immediately within two weeks after that experience, um, things started happening. And uh, within two years, I was in Washington, D.C. with some of the highest officials in the land. And. Uh, it was them. It was my government friends that really brought peace to my family and that vindication he's talking about. They came and they talked with my children. My friend Jim Simivan is instrumental in, in talking with my children and saying, you be proud of who you are. Be proud of what y'all have experienced and what your father has seen. Uh, don't listen to these people. So. It all happened after she came in 2012. Very good. That was the demarcation. Yeah. And I've got an interesting question since you bring up your government friends and how helpful they've been. Right. D.E. Secconi, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. right. The viewer asks, do you think these entities feel at all aligned with our governments in any way? Um, I don't know that at all. I couldn't answer that. Um, I do know that they're, they're, they're appearing uh, alarmed at the way the world is heading. The weather's gotten crazy and, and people are suffering all around and starving and homeless and wars happening. And I really think that they're alarmed, just like the food fighters in World War II. They started appearing then. And... Um, we're really beginning to show themselves and now they're doing it again. And where does it all go? I think, uh, I think they want us to know that we're not alone and they're going to see to it that, that we get there. In, in other words, I think as you were explaining to me earlier, it's your opinion that the orbs that you see these days are the same phenomena that was reported the same phenomenon that yeah. was reported in World War II and were called Foo Fighters. Yeah, exactly. Same thing. Here's a question from a viewer whose YouTube name is Sensitive Style, who says, I have been following Chris for years now on podcasts. He often sends videos to the interviewer that are not shared with us. I often wonder why we can't see them too. Well, go to my Instagram and you'll see, uh, I just put some very recent ones on there. 
um, that was incredible uh, of this fire and people saying, oh, it's a firefly. Well, no, it's not. I started filming them in February in all of March when it was snowy out. And uh, fireflies don't even hatch here in June, right? So this, look at those videos. I have a hundred videos like that all around Easter. Um, and it's, it's, it's all exciting and new. It's, I don't know how to put it other than, uh, you know, I'll get around to sharing more. It's just a reason I have it. Uh, you know, there's a big reason I have it. And I just can't say what that reason is, but it'll come out later this year, I think. Okay. And uh, I've got a question here. The um, YouTube name is Dream Detective One. And I'm pretty sure Dream Detective One is my friend Christopher Robinson, who's been a guest. <laughs> on this program and his experiences are not so different from your own. He's had UFO contacts and uh, dreams. The dreams are sent to him and they often yeah. warn accurately about terrorist attacks and yeah. things of that sort. Um, a new book has just been published about him called The Premonition Man. And he asks, Christopher, do you think being a Christopher has anything to do with this? It was put <laughs> to me by a vicar in 1990. He felt my name being also Christopher may have a connection. Well, uh, that would be only speculation to answer that, right? I have no way of knowing. Uh, I've never thought of that period, but that would be uh, something to speculate about for sure. My son is Christopher as well, so. Okay, and here we have a question from a viewer whose YouTube name is Razor Scope, who asks about the figure who, that's on the cover of your book, UFO of God. Is it male or female? What's the backstory on the, the cover image? Well, the, the cover is, of, uh, is Salvador Munda by Leonardo da Vinci. And uh, there's, a, there's a reason I use that image. For one, the biggest reason is notice the orb he's holding in his hand. And that orb tells a story that Leo, uh, Leonardo knew something we don't. Because if you look at that, it's not a crystal ball. If it was, when you look through the image, everything in the rear would be reversed. And Leo, Leonardo knew that. So this orb... Uh, looks exactly like the orbs that I see and that we film. And uh, it's and very up close, a lot of them. They'll be all about that size, sometimes much bigger. They can, they can appear as a pinpoint of light to as big as a home uh, and do it very rapidly. But um, notice the three dots inside of that orb he's holding. Those three dots... Uh, come to me continually. Uh, they appear in the sky as triangles. Uh, they'll appear as, as three. The number three is a huge number with the phenomena. They're always uh, communicating with me in the number three. And so that really had a big draw to me. And I wanted the cover to be controversial to get people from the biblical world to realize that what they're seeing today or what we're seeing today is basically the same thing they were seeing 2000 years ago. You read about the story of Paul in the Bible. He was knocked off a horse by an orb, took him to the third level of heaven and put a thorn in his side. What is that? An implant, maybe. And I'm getting this from academics and so on, but it's all related. It's all related. And we need to, to have a serious conversation within uh, the science community and the church people and realize that we really don't know what we think we know. Uh, but it's time to awaken to it today. Okay, and I just showed your uh, book cover. 
so uh, people could have a more explicit uh, idea of what we're talking about here. I've got a, another question from Courtney Solomon, who asks, does the energy ever feel different or is it the same every time? Is there a sense of oneness when you experience the phenomenon? Yes, yes, Courtney, there is a sense of oneness. And the, uh, the feeling is not always the same. Uh, sometimes it's much greater. It's according to how close they come. Uh, if they get very close, I have video that I put on my YouTube, I mean, my Instagram, of an orb going into a tree. You can see it. I watched it for a long time before I put the camera on it. As soon as I put the camera on it, it disappears into the tree. But here's the thing. You can hear it. If you turn the volume up, you can hear the electricity from it, the static. It sounds like a, 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 the buzzing from electrical current. And uh, so when you feel that, you see it. When you hear that, you feel it in a greater way. So it's not always the same it's the same type of energy but it can get uh, it can get so great that it takes my breath away that i have to you know try to get my breath it, it can be that shocking not negative but in a good way here's a question from a viewer whose youtube name is colorado wellness who asks if anything unique happened this past Easter that you would like to share? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I referred to that earlier on the Instagram. Um, every Easter, there's something special that happens. Either um, this year was no exception. This year, I, we experienced this fire, this yellow flame that uh, started in February and got more and more uh, intense as Easter came. And within two to three days after Easter came, it stopped and it has been sporadic since, but it was all something. And I noticed this, I don't know why, but uh, when there are uh, certain things like, like equinoxes, the energy is greater around Easter, around Christmas, the summer equinox, uh, special alignments when we had the blood moons back then, uh, the energy was higher and these beings appear. Why that is, I'm not sure. But I've just 16 years of documenting this stuff. There is a definite difference in these certain times of the year. I've got a question here from a, a viewer whose YouTube name is The Drone Ranger, uh, who asks about what he calls hitchhikers. When people visit you and experience some of these phenomena in your presence, do the phenomena then follow them back to uh, their own home? Do they continue for any of these people? Uh, yeah, not everyone, but for... Uh... For a good portion of them, yes, a good portion. And you know what that is? I honestly believe that I'm, my job is to introduce the phenomenon to people. It's their job to embrace it, accept it, or ignore it. And I think that the people that embrace it, after they leave here, it goes home with them. They, uh, they accept it. And then it'll interact. But if you don't accept it, and if you're skeptic at all, you're not going to experience it. I'm sorry. Uh, but it's, it's part of, of uh, not going against our free will. I don't, I'm sure they don't want to go against our free will. And it's just, that rings true. And uh, being introduced to it and then accepting it. We go through that when people come here. When they come, I, I kind of, tell them uh, you want to see this you got to be open you got to be willing to accept that they're real and uh 
and those that do usually get to see it. And um, there's a viewer whose YouTube name is Nagilum, who says, my mind is open, but my heart is closed. How do I fix this, Chris? Um, you have to, uh, you have to be persistent. Go out at night and open your heart, open your thoughts and, and, and be willing and accepting and um, say a little prayer. That's how it works for me. Uh, you know, I, I actually am reverent to it. And, and if you are, they tend to, uh, and when you talk about it, I've seen this happen a thousand times and I've shared it with others. If I have a group that comes here, it's five or six people or 35 people. The bigger the group, the more difficult. But, and I learned this from NASA from my friend Tim Taylor taught me, Chris, it's a lot like when the Bible says we're more than one are gathered uh, and there they'll be. Well, I found that to be very true. Um, if my group is all in tune together and we're all thinking about the phenomenon and we're talking about it and they tend to get excited and appear. But if somebody goes off on the football or baseball or some other conversation, suddenly the phenomenon stops and everybody's like, what happened? I said, okay, well, let's get our mind back on the phenomenon. Everybody is one. So when we all join together as one and we think about it and we talk about it, uh, that's when it starts back again. So it's, 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 it's connected to our thoughts. And if your thoughts are there, and, and it, it open and accepting, I think you'll see a difference in what's, you know, its appearance. And we're all at the top of the hour now. So I want to let everyone know we're going to continue for another half hour. Uh, so we're very happy to keep fielding your questions until then. Deborah Bayer says, please forgive me. I'm new to your work and experience. Have you had neurological testing? Is there anything different about your brain or your eyesight? Well, yeah, uh, and I'm, I, really, uh, I really shouldn't address that today. But if you remember, if you read the book, the last chapter was about the Monroe Institute. And there they had uh, wired me up with these two machines that uh, I got the best of them. It, they would never work. And the electrical engineer there, he just got, his name was Russ from, from UVA. He was beside himself just saying this thing should work. Well, we continued to do that study after the Monroe Institute with some amazing outcomes. And I, I can't say any more there, but stay tuned to this summer to the History Channel. And I think that question is going to be answered for everyone live. Very good. And I know that uh, you've recently done some work with the History Channel. So I'm sure they've got something uh, in the works. Yeah, yeah. Here's a question uh, from a viewer whose in, uh, YouTube name is Sky Scanner, who says, I too have had many encounters with the beings of light. They started coming to my attic window back in 2013, all the way through to 2021. Would it be okay to send Chris a few of my sightings? Sure. Uh, look me up on uh, one of my social medias, Facebook or Instagram. And there's a messaging service there. Everybody does that. They share videos with me. Lots of people do. Uh, literally um, uh, hundreds of people share videos with me through that means. And I, I try to answer everyone and uh, help people find answers there. And I've got another uh, question from a viewer whose internet name is YouTube name is Klapa Wapa. 
Well, Flappa Wappa asks, should we pledge allegiance to these orbs that may hold the keys to healing and thriving, or may there be trickery afoot and we should look inward to our own self-development? Well, I, I've not experienced the trickery thing. Um, I've had no negative experiences whatsoever from this, uh, even though you hear people talk about it. Um, uh, you know, it, I, I don't know how to answer that trickery thing. I, 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 you know, I'm aligned with the positive side of things. I think if you're, if you, you have uh, your heart in the right place and you stay positive, don't allow any negative into your life. Um, I think they'll align themselves with you. That's what's happened with me. Mm -hmm. David Warman asks, what is your most memorable experience? Oh, Lord, I can never forget the day they took me in 2007. Uh, that awakening to uh, something in the daytime i'm standing at 5 15 in the day looking at these things and uh what changed my whole life was that day when they recognized me. when i knew without a shadow of a doubt seeing an orb is one thing or a ufo see it fly by see it from your car and it goes down the road um it's one thing to see it, but when you realize that it sees you and that you're on the radar of this, whatever magnificent power it, it, it is, it actually brought chills down me that I can't uh, ever uh, forget about. So the most memorable experience was the day I knew that they had me on their radar. And, and from then, it's just been a joy. But the first day, it was very frightening when it said, hey, you're not going to run. You're not going to get away. We see you. And uh, that was the very moment for me that changed everything. Here's a question from Ethan Margolith. Who, and I think his question is probably one that many of our viewers are thinking which is, what if you ask the lady to help me experience and share others more love with others? Can you do that? Uh, uh, yeah, I can do that. And um, I, I think she is a very integral part in, in these beings. They seem to be uh, under her control. I, I really believe she's in control of this thing. And um, the, the orbs accompanied her. Uh, but um, I would be glad to to ask, and I do to to ask it to to guide me and to help me bring others into that presence. And yeah, uh, reach out to me if you want, and I'll say a prayer that that that, that she comes into your life. Be glad to do that. Here's a question from. Julie Farrell, who says, hi, Chris, we spoke on the phone once, and could yeah. you share your thoughts on Sasquatch and the connectedness of the many aspects <laughs> of the phenomenon with the public? Yeah, I, I've not experienced Sasquatch personally, uh, although uh, I believe it's very real. In fact, it, it, it would be almost... Uh, if you studied all the, the records from a thousand years ago to every continent on earth that people are seeing these things, I really believe they're real. And I think that, that nature is much more magical than we understand. I think that in nature, uh, some they may have possessed something magical that they can appear or disappear at will. Uh, you know, I, I would believe that it's possible. I, I do know that these spiritual beings, they appear uh, to us in nature as owls, as hummingbirds or uh, animals. 
look at the 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 Egyptians, their deities. They weren't ancient aliens. They were animals. They were birds. Horus was a hawk, right? Uh, or a falcon, or one of those. But they they have alligator beings and and jackals and all sorts of animals. And I've talked to to a PhD on that subject uh, that studied in Egypt, and he told me, Chris, if you just knew all these hieroglyphs, I can read them fluently. And it's everywhere written in Egypt that they're forces of nature, that uh, they're called the netur. And I'm like, well, what is that, the netur? He said, well, this word is nature. And they called them na nature spirits. The, the, the gods can come down and be beside you as a lion watching you and you not even know it, right? It could be a lot of things. Laura Newbert, who is one of our volunteers, asks, what do they want from us? I, I think they don't want us suffering. They don't, they, they want us to, to know them, that they're real. Uh, and I think we're going to see that happen. That's why they were appearing in World War II, I feel sure, because all the great suffering that was going on. That it was a horrible thing that humanity went through. And so they came and they were observing. And I don't think they're going to let it get to that point again before they intervene. So I think that's why they're here now. I really do believe that they're on alert uh, to uh, how things could get if we're not careful. We could have World War III before we know it, if things... Um, get any worse so and i believe they're on high alert from that and i think they're going to wake us up i really do it's coming and, and i believe the government knows this i know they do they just don't know how to tell it avi cohen asks what were the prophecies that you were told and which ones have been fulfilled already well, I try to stay away from that because I don't want to be known as some crazy person giving prophecy, even though she the biggest thing she told me the lady did was that uh, there was going to be a new knowledge when this alignment happens. Well, that alignment, the date was given by others. I didn't know the date. Um, but as far as any other prophecies, good or bad, I was shown a lot of negative stuff that could happen. And uh, remember, I don't like to talk about negative things. So I'm only looking for the good things she showed. It can go like this or it can go like this. We have a choice. We wake up and, and unite as human beings or we go down the tubes. So uh, I really think that they're going to stop it this time before we get too far gone. I've got a question here from a viewer named Steve Hassler, who asks, what are the three things we can incorporate into our lives to connect in a positive way with the phenomenon? Well, for one, live your life in a positive way every day. Only think about positive things and be kind to everyone. Uh, be helpful to those that need help. Um, I didn't used to be that way. I used to think about myself and my family and work, and that was it. And now uh, they changed me. I can see someone struggling on television, and it makes me cry. I can't help the emotions. So they really changed my whole way of looking at life. But to stay positive and to uh, be open to the fact that there are these beings around us, call them what we want. Uh, I don't call them aliens because it's a foreign name. That, should, that tells me it's foreign. It's coming from some far away place. I think they're always here. I think uh, Dr. Bigelow, Robert Bigelow said it good. They're, they're right here. You don't have to go anywhere to find them. They're around us. They live in the sky above us in the air and uh, uh, seek and ye shall find 
knock and the door shall be open. That's an old Bible verse that I used to uh, read. And I really believe if you seek, you'll find. But you got to transform your way that you uh, are around others. You got to love each other. You got to love your family and your friends and not put yourself first, but put yourself behind others. And that's kind of the way I do things. Beautifully put, Chris. And Thank you. Uh, here is a viewer named S.J. Uh, who said, because you have said you believe in God, what's the connection between God and these phenomena? Well, I, I think it's the same thing. Uh, it's possible that it is the, the biblical angels from the Bible. The way they described them was 2,000 years ago in their time. But today, we, we had to make of that what it is. What is it? Uh, are they grandma with wings or a baby with a little bow and wings flying around? No. No, it's not like that. They're creatures. Even the Bible talks about creatures that are angelic beings or messengers or the Moloch. Uh, uh, for example, Ezekiel talks about an angel that, that he saw. And it had four faces. It had the face of a cow, the face of a, uh, or an ox, and a, and a lion, and an eagle, and a person. So what were they trying to show us? These forces of nature that we speak about, uh, about Egypt. Um, they're creatures, not necessarily some glorious grandma would have said a wing. So it's, 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 I really believe, look at Paul, the apostle Paul. He was knocked off the horse by an orb that blinded him. So I think we got to look deeper at what we believe in and what we've been reading for all these years and realize it's still here. It's not going anywhere. But what really is it? You know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of science and, and learning that has to be done. We're just barely cracking the door open to see what these ancients were writing about. A viewer whose name is Have a Nice Day said um, that you said being skeptical blocks the experience. Yep. Therefore, how do you be discerning without being skeptical and blocking it? Well, this is what I tried to explain to uh, the people at the Monroe. Uh, you have to leave all skepticism at the door when you go in when you walk in or you come here you got to leave it and let the phenomenon manifest and if and i guarantee you it if you do that it will do things to open your eyes to uh, to let you know that it's there and I, I don't discern whether it's evil or good because i don't live in a negative life uh, I don't let that negative around me. And uh, 16 years of this has always been positive. It's the people that, that was tough to deal with. It wasn't the phenomenon at all. And I have a viewer here named Kaylee Kay, who asks if you've ever used a laser to try and attract them. Um, no, I've... I've been at the Monroe where they had lasers there because some of these guys brought them but I never used that I, I don't have to attract them. it's pretty simple to me when I walk outside if they see me here they come most of the time they'll greet me but if not I'll simply say a little prayer I'm here um, if it be your will I'd like to be in your presence and then sometimes immediately they start flashing and appearing and coming to um, it might be 10 or 15 minutes before it starts. And when it does, here they come. Uh, and a lot of them at times. And a viewer named Sonia TB says that in a previous interview, you talked about a NASA study concerning the quote, green light. 
Can you yeah. elaborate on that? Yeah, I sure can. Um, they did a study about that, and I've read it, and I have it here handy, uh, but I'm not going to look for it. I could just quote it more. But basically, what they're saying is they have found, with a question mark, God. Is this God? And uh, the way the article reads is that human beings have something called ADT in their body, which is hemoglobin, where plants have ADT, which is chlorophyll. It's the same thing, works the same way, but plant versus human. And that, uh, the, the green light is what causes the ADT or the chlorophyll to start working and creating life. That the information from the instructions for that plant or those cells in your body to every living thing is getting that wireless information through the green light. That's what their study basically says, that God is talking to us through the green light. It's, it's interesting they even refer to the scriptures in the Bible where it says, and he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. What is that about, right? Is there some kind of hint there of saying this study that, you know, from 2,000 years ago? But uh, the center of the color spectrum is green, the dead center, the orbori, or, or borealis, the aurora borealis is mostly green. And it's the way the angle of the light hits the earth and it casts that green light over the planet, which all the trees are green. And, uh, you know, pretty much is the encoding of light wirelessly is coming through that light. That's basically what the study is, that God is talking, is telling themselves in your body, you're not telling that molecule what to do. It's got its own instructions, and it came from somewhere. We didn't write them instructions. We didn't encode it. There's a higher power that did that. So you're talking about a higher power that maybe even programmed our biology. Yes, absolutely. And it's pretty evident. If you look at the new science, uh, it started in about 2011, and it's even greater today. Google um, uh, the micro machines in your body, uh, the, the, um, the um, molecules, the tiny molecules, they have they have computer animations now showing your DNA and the machine that it is and how it replicates and, and how there are little machines, little workers that walk down strands and step over things. And, and so it's gotten the new science into believing that, knowing that it didn't happen by accident. It took a mind of some sort to create that. Uh, we can't even fathom. So. All this is part of the awakening I think we're going to go through, realizing that something greater created us all. Here is a question from a viewer whose YouTube name is UIP. He says, Mr. Bledsoe, have you been made privy to any other noteworthy contemporary cases more recent than Fatima? for example, which parallel yours? Um, no, uh, the, we've discussed the Fatima, uh, Lourdes, France, Guadalupe, uh, but nothing since Fatima uh, or more current that I'm aware of. But we have talked uh, at length about that with my government friends and some academics. Uh, they actually studied this and you know it's just, it's just, i just um i can't think of any right now okay and i've got another request here from our mutual friend john alexander who points out that we're we're going to conclude in eight minutes and he wishes that we would talk more about healing before time runs out yeah okay um 
Well, in the book, you'll read, if you, if you read the book, the one of the cases I talk about is a young boy that uh, was dying. Uh, he was given a make a wish. And his father and mother are very high level, uh, prominent people from Washington, D.C. I mean, uh, he was appointed by Bill Clinton. His father was to his position. And um, I had no idea about healing anything other than this dog that happens. That was the first clue that something was happening. Something was going on. The lady appeared in 2013. Two weeks later, uh, this dog incident happens. So that I put that, I told that story to some friends and it went out through the community. And next thing I know, I'm being called to Washington to help this little boy that uh, had a feeding tube put in and we were told he was going to die. And so I was afraid, terrified. I had no idea to, to this day what it is I'm supposed to do. I don't know. I just pray that the, the phenomenon, the, the, the angels, whatever they are, that they would help this child. And uh, I was flown up to DC and I sat there with this young boy and I listened to him and he was just, uh, uh, he never complained. I mean, it was just, I have more respect for this young fellow than, in fact, I'm gonna go spend a few days with him next week in Delaware. He's now going to be a junior in college, but he was unable to, to eat, couldn't eat anything. If he did, he threw up uh, profusely. So they had to feed him through a feeding tube. And once that happened, uh, the feeding tube went in, they didn't give him long to live. But so I uh, sat there talking to him and his family the whole time. And I'm praying silently, Lord, me what am i doing here how did i get here what am i supposed to do i don't have a clue and this voice came into my head and said just reach out and hug him and so uh, i did and uh, that was in 2015 or 16 and um, like i say he's starting to be a junior in school well that opened the door, the word got around, and Lord, before I knew it, there was a never-ending line of people needing help, and it's every day I get all these calls or requests, and I have seen quite a few people. One lady is in the book, her name is Sharon. She's the one that was healed from kidney cancer, right? We talked about that. In, in the book. But what I didn't talk about was it's the same lady that calls me two years later and cancer had come back in her lungs this time before it was in her kidney. And so she comes to my house for a prayer or for help, whatever we could do. Still, I'm a rookie. I don't know what I'm doing. Right. And this is when the orb appeared in front of us. And flew right up to she and I and flashed and out steps this six or seven foot tall glowing white figure. And it removed her kidney cancer, I mean, her lung cancer. So she was healed not only from kidney cancer, but from lung cancer as well. So I've seen a lot of this. And, um, and all I can do is ask, you know, in prayer. And, but it's real. It's really happening. And a little People write me all the time saying thank you uh, for, and then I have people that it don't help. Why that is, I don't know. I have no clue. I'm a rookie at all of this. I wish I had guidance. Okay, well, we have three minutes left. And before we close, I want to remind our viewers about the New Thinking Aloud magazine. Uh, you can go to the New Thinking Aloud Foundation and download issue number one for free. Issue number two will be available as of June 1st, and issue number three will be available on September 1st. And I wouldn't be surprised if there's a picture of 
you, Chris, on the cover of uh, <laughs> one of these issues coming up soon, very likely issue number three. Uh, but we'll see about that. I also want our viewers to know we publish a weekly newsletter that is full of information, artwork, poetry, advanced previews of our upcoming uh, videos. Uh, it, for those of you who are regular viewers of New Thinking Aloud, I think you would want to subscribe to our free weekly newsletter. And also, we have just launched a book series, the New Thinking Aloud Dialogue series published by White Crow Books. The very first book in the series is called Is There Life After Death? And uh, the official release date of that book is also June 1st, but you can order an advanced copy right now on Amazon. Just go to New Thinking Aloud Dialogue series is there life after death on Amazon? Uh, Chris, there's just a minute left. Do you have a final thought to share with our viewers? Um, well, uh, yes, I appreciate you all. I appreciate everyone that reaches out to me. Uh, and I'd have to say everybody's so nice and caring and I rarely ever have any Negative comments from anyone is rare. And that's a huge change because 2016 or 2012 or 2007, it was everybody was negative, you know, and I just wanted to give up. But, but today I'm overwhelmed uh, out of everybody's kindness and uh, support. And uh, if you want to reach out to me, you can through my uh, social media, and I'll be glad to to try to answer anything I can or look at your videos or share even a couple. I, sometimes I share videos that I don't put on Instagram with individuals that, that reach out to me. So, but I appreciate you all. And I appreciate you, Dr. Mishla, for having me. It has been uh, my greatest blessing to be, because I've always been a fan of yours way back. Uh, I used to watch you long before I was into this, right? So thank you for having me. Thank everybody. Well, it, it's an honor for us to be with you, Chris, and an honor for me to be able to share your experiences with the New Thinking Aloud audience. And for those of you who have been listening or watching, thank you, because you are the reason that we are here. And now I will end the live stream.